one reason barrier is um, you know women are always uh, shy and uh, they, are, they, they lack confidence in that case we must I am thankful to this um, family here we learn how to speak in public how to be confident and that's what we are here for we are being trained to be confident in speaking to others to lead others and uh, I'm so glad to be a uh, family Pacific. The barriers I think would be the lack of support from the family and uh, the community as well and another barrier would be though we are able to speak out there is like a lack of uh, capacity building training this is uh, one of the barriers that I think are there for the women. For barriers uh, um, I think uh, the families don't support them, they don't have time, they don't have time to come out and uh, do the work. Okay, the barriers, the, the barriers of women can communicate because people like the family or the men of the, of the family know that women is for to cook food in the kitchen. I, I, I think the women are the best, uh, are the first responder to all the things and uh, they should be empowered on that. And uh, men, they should come together and uh, sit together and do awareness together so that the women can, uh, can come out from their shells too. Barriers. Oh, for the Indian women especially, like uh, it's the mothers-in-law sometimes. They do not want these young women to move out of their homes. They think their place is in the kitchen. They are there to take care of them, etc. So I think they should uh, change their attitude and allow these young women to at least come out of their comfort zones and join other clubs and organizations. Uh, women itself are not supporting women. Why is it? Because in my village, though we are far from the mainland, some of the ladies who they are walking in the island, when they come to the island, when they come to our women's club, they are the one who changing lots of things what we are doing in the women's club. When we tell them what we are doing and come around, around again, they are saying that it's, oh, it's not good that this kind of lots of uh, lots of uh, what they are so what uh, educated than us staying in the village. Um, one of the main barriers is that the stigma um, that would be around accessibility. Um, one is on one can be around um, the fear of being participate um, and also um, to share information. Yeah. In terms of accessibility, it can be not access into information, uh, not access into environment, uh, whereby, for a example, if I'm confined in a wheelchair, um, if the place is not access to wheelchair, then that's a barrier for me to be participate. I think some of the barriers, and I think we, need, we still need to recognize that we don't just live in a colonial system, we live in a very patriarchal system still though, and, and I think one of our strongest barriers is ensuring, uh, not ensuring, but I think one of our urgent barriers is that we continuously see um, that even though men are speaking for women, we need to ensure that you know that's, that 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 in itself is a barrier that women need to be supported by the men and not men speaking on behalf of women, and I think that's important at this point in time. The barriers is uh, of uh, traditional and uh, culture, which stops women to stand up because there are many people turn to look at women to stay at home, and uh, another one is education. Yeah. Many are not well educated, so we have to train women to be educated and stand up. We have to the support from uh, family members and uh, stakeholders, have to uh, do more trainings and uh, educated women to stand up and become leaders in future. We have to be empowered and uh, be bold enough to come out of that uh, silent shells and speak out.